said earlier on, I'd be giving my verdict on which version is better to pre-order. Honestly, go with where your friends are. That's it. Connection-wise, the PS4 seems to be overall better for less connection strength. I have faith that Tecmo will probably level that out as they have done with DOA 5 in recent times. I would say recent because I went back on to try it and it seems to be about the same on both. Anyway, aside from that, uh, the best quality connection I had was on the Xbox. I had a lot more general good connection quality on the PlayStation, which is not why I'm on it now. I was just on the PlayStation version 2 and around in training, and I want to do some command training for a few people that I'm actually interested in. First and foremost, Reek's command training was a bit too easy for me. So I decided that I wanted to give a few other people a try and maybe learn some new stuff. So I have three people picked out that I actually want to get used to. First and foremost, let's just start with the big bad Bayman himself. Considering that I really like playing Bayman, he's a good counter strategy, I don't think I'll get to play him that much when the game actually comes out, because frankly, you need a solid connection for it, and this game just doesn't seem to offer that. I uh, really, really don't like that about this. Anyway, first off, this is pretty much... Super fast, Jesus. Anyway, as I was saying about the connection while I just casually, you know, look through these to a degree, it's pretty much all dependent on where your friends are as to what you're going to enjoy more. You know you can get a good connection with most of your friends regardless of where you are throughout the world in a way, because you regularly play with them, you know what to expect. But then. Wow. I wouldn't say there's particularly that much to expect in terms of massive problems in the actual online. Either way, I would say that given the fact, or more like given the situation of most betas these days are just dreadful in terms of how many issues actually plague their early stage betas, pre-release, VIP demos, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's always terrible, connection-wise. So I'm not going to pass judgement fully on that. I would say where I'll get more enjoyment is probably the Xbox. Simply because more people are there. It's where the old gang are from the DOA 5 days. And I dare say that I'll end up streaming quite a few fights against them. Simply because I know the connection will be good and, well, frankly, I rather enjoy the fights against them more than other people. But then again, I will maintain that there are a lot of factors in it for me, not necessarily for everybody. Other than friends, I prefer the Xbox's controller layout. I don't really like the way the PS4 is laid out to fight the games. I find it a little bit difficult to do a few more I guess it just comes with practice. But the Xbox controller just feels a lot easier to pick up from, you know? It's a lot more ergonomic and it gives that kind of pick up and play feel to it a lot more than the PS4 does. Aside from that, well... The PS4's connection, like I said, seems to be overall better. The community seems to be equally divided to a degree. I'd say probably about 55% Xbox, 45% uh, PS4. But then, that's just with people I get matched with. There are a lot of people who have obviously experienced like, a very low wait time on both platforms. I'm unfortunately not one of them. I got quite large wait times on the PS4 in comparison to the Xbox. A little bit strange, but then, I don't know, maybe people just don't like playing this game as much anymore. Okay, you actually get an offensive forward roll now. I knew that they look almost exactly alike. That one's a little bit faster. 
but that gives a kick, huh? On the day man's throws already. Hold. Oh. That timing's changed. Oh yeah, that's late. That one doesn't. Still lock me. And that's still the same. That feels really sluggishly slow. It's timed that, but you know, we'll ignore it. DDT, a throw that you pretty much work to perfection, I don't ever get the land. Fun fact, that can perform both ways. This has ridiculous distance. Why did you feel the need to teach me those after the combo goes? Well, that's that. Well, combo training with Bearman was nice and easy. Could I save the most challenging for last? I just go with it. Now you know what, after fighting Resic the other day, I am curious as to what things can actually be. But screw it, I'm finding it. Right. Was that fucking bitch slap slice? Yes it actually was. Good lord.
That's fatal stuff. At least that's not a free crit burst. Because that was pretty terrifying. Doing this with a stick that always constantly like veers to the left. In fact, if I leave it in the restful position of where it naturally sits, is it still buggered or is clicking it in fixed it for a bit? Yeah, there you go. Okay, hang on. That should do it. Good thing I've got a new controller sitting on the side here that I'm not using for some reason because I'm an idiot. Oh, that gets a close hit now, huh? Ah, yeah. That gets a close hit which really ruins the timing of the thing. I'm guessing... No, it does. Still get it, it's just quite difficult to get. Yeah, there's that which can easily just do it all the time. I wonder if that still changes to the uh, GTS if you're on counter hit. That's got an early combo at some point. land that on me in like a second. Shit. Kinda scary that one, you know. the giant swing.
That was not even remotely good. Don't even lie to me. Position, please stick. Stop ignoring. Me. There we go. Oh, and up. A lot more aerodynamics. Ah, they don't just get away with it. Well, all right. That's a quick timing now. Well, Tina's command list has a few new things in there. Not really that much that seems all too special. Or all too useful. But then, hey, I could be wrong. Maybe it's just me not seeing the value in things. If I actually gave Tina a try, then perhaps. Okay. This is where cancels are going to do my head in. That's a pretty good fit. Although it doesn't really give you much in the way of follow up aside from that. Another one whose voice actor didn't reprise their role as well, Mila. I'm quite surprised. I don't quite know why though.
could have just released that with hold, to be honest, but you know, we'll uh, ignore that. Wild backstepping. Should be. Apparently not. But then it's not just like backdashing, is it? Interesting. I'm not quite sure what that actually means, because it's not a backdash, because that's that. Backstep is that. So. Hang on. There must be a neutral... Right, so it has to be from that, does it? I mean, it makes it easiest just to do it from that, I suppose, but... Yep, you can still follow that up with a grab, okay. Mailers cancel surprisingly ain't that difficult. Makes me wonder why I never actually bothered to like properly get a grips with it before. Well There is one other character I do want to try. Just for the sense complications. Stop. That involves a lot of hits. I thought that was an elbow for a second. Right in the damn chin too, that looks painful. Huh, 
part of X-Match and spot now. That still works. Ha! Ah. I'm disappointed, actually. And it results in a knockdown. That puts Eleanor at a disadvantage against any rookie who uses rising attack. Phoenix stands. Yeah, that's behind mid high. High mid. That is back facing, huh? Well, actually, the best way to get into back facing is that. This is actually a good way to test out wall combos at this point. That actually works too! Cool! Alright, well... How much of a distance closer does that act have? That's not great, but it is. Two hits.
we did kind of know I'm not, but okay. I missed something in here. Right, it's doing the dust, that's what that's called. How did I forget? You stand right in front of somebody, huh? ways of crouching down now, huh? Oh, now you teach me how to do that. Helpful. Well, hell on this command training was somewhat enlightening, though I think more hands on time and about four run-throughs of that should give me the variation that I need to actually get good enough to use her in an actual fight. Which is not someone you can pick up very easily, especially when you've got a juggle that stance transitions smoothly and your head's got to calculate what you're going to need to do to pull off a combo in all three of them before you even pretty much land a couple of hits. Either that or you just let the floor take over and just do random strikes. Not great for your juggle potential, but for Elena's unpredictability, it is good. I should say Elena, but you know... Once you get someone's name stuck in your head and use it on a daily basis mostly, it kind of takes over this pronunciation for the majority. Lei Fang has nothing new, I've pretty much checked over her stuff already, so there's nothing new there to really go for. The only other thing to really check on is probably Nico's stuff. But then hey, since she's a new character, I think I want to do that in my own time. After all, the new character Edge is a real thing. Like, when these two first got added in, he was everywhere. I'm kidding, he was like, crap. <laughs> Everyone thought he was rubbish, and then just no one used him whatsoever. 
Everyone thought Mila was awesome. Everyone used Mila. Mila got nerfed. Rig got buffed. And here we are today with a good balance between the two. And he's just generally... I would say he went from where he was originally in the DOA 5 tier list, like the official proper tier list that the pros have put together, where he was like D grade. Went all the way to like B plus, and Mila was like, what, C minus or something? It ended up pretty badly. Rig ended up a lot better off, and I'm pleased for it, because I picked him up when he was in D. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I have a habit of picking up low tier characters, so whoever turns out to be really garbage in this, I'm probably going to use their bit. Namely, because I don't want to use Rig anymore because of his bad voice actor. I do still want to use him in all this, like, I'll just use him in Japanese voice acting mode, that's fine. But, uh, it, it's going to needle me for a while until I pick someone new up. Now, there are no new members to the cast aside from, well, Nico and Diego. So, the obvious choice is to pick one of these. I don't like Diego's style very much. He has a few neat little tricks, but he seems a little bit too uh, basic. Whereas Nico seems a bit more of the higher skill curve. Hell, I could be completely wrong. But that's kind of the uh, the vibe that I'm getting. So you're probably going to see me use this little biatch sooner or later. Like the game needed another missed scientist though. Like I think hang on, hang on, let me just go over this. Right. I'm trying to think here, and this is doing my head in because of... I think they have announced like a new missed character in every game, haven't they? Because I'm thinking that Unless Lisa was in the first DOA. Although, hang on. No, no, no. Hold up. Right, so in the first DOA... Uh, I can't even remember who was actually in the first DOA. I'm going to have to look that up. And my phone's on charge, so I can't. But I'm pretty sure that I... Looking at it, there is a number of missed for each game in the series thus far, is there not? Oh well no, because two of them were added in in five technically, I guess, kinda. If you count Project Epsilon being like the spin-off of higher thing. Yeah, you got Christy, Raidu the Resurrected. You've got freaking good old Captain Rig here who's still affiliation still isn't really figured out. Nico, who is just out and outright a missed scientist, is pretty much confirmed in the bio there. And then, of course, Phase 4 and Alpha 152, who is the one character I think is probably going to make their way back into this game somehow or other. Unless Phase is now magically a lot more like Alpha, but that remains to be seen, and I can't test it until the game comes out. So, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Either way, as for the rest of the cast, I don't know if I'm interested in picking them up. I did pick up Hitomi and Leifang for a while in 5, but... Hitomi relies a bit too much on basic punch combos. She is effectively the opposite of him. And I say that because Christie's strikes are tricky enough to kind of get around the predictability. Rigs can be, but <laughs> as I've already established in this version, at least of the OS 6, his forward kick kick is going to be his like go-to move for 6 out of 10 situations. So I would say just hold new kick and you've pretty much got Rig down. Mid and high kicker is B and B. His laws are virtually non-existent in terms of their utility aside from his bending stance for combo ending sweep. Other than that, well, yeah, I don't think he really has many tools. His throws do hurt more now, so he does have more of a counter to it. And his holds, his holds may be like, oh yeah, they're terrible according to like the, the little graph. But he has a full set, plus one extra. Now obviously everyone has a full set, but having the expert hold in Spiral Shaft can really turn things around. 
Although, it's not that good of a hold in comparison to the combo ability of his mid-kick hold. I guess it's just the guaranteed damage, like if you know you're going to kill somebody, he does a rising kick or something. Just drop it in and it's clearly done. The fact that he does have the expert hold, of course, does give me the versatility to actually get the expert hold titles and whatnot that are up grabs with him. But, you know. Coincidentally, I actually do wonder now, because I'm thinking... I'm guessing that once you unlock a title for somebody, you can just use it for anybody, right? Because it would be nice if, like, a character can unlock a title, then you have to unlock it with them. But I guess... I don't know. We'll, have, we'll probably add more titles in regularly. They're a, a good spender for your DOA points, so they'll probably last a while. Costumes are going to be the big thing, obviously, with this still we are. I'm just wondering what the hell their plan is for the long game, because they're going to need to continue with a way to spend all of your DOA coins, or player points as they call them. New voice lines for everybody. See, I can't view those, because they'd be in there. And you need, it looks like, from what I can tell, you need to equip them to actually use them. Unlike in DOA 5, where it was dependent on your health gauge, because, see, in fight mode, it just gave you a victory pause depending on, well, I think it was just depending on the time of your victory, whereas in a ranked match, it gives it based on your total percentage of remaining health over the rounds, or actually, was it just the last round? I can't remember if they changed it. Because I remember that uh, if it was a close match, Rig would always celebrate just by shouting at the top of his lungs and then acting smug. If it was a perfect victory, <laughs> he'd pretty much just walk off. Uh, not quite sure about everyone else. I know Milo is just generally ecstatic at a good fight pretty much every time. I think she only had like two victory calls. Anyway, I'm going to call it a day on this for now. I feel like I've really stretched myself out and given myself a bit of a brain workout in terms of remembering a lot of characters. As per usual, I am still wanting to basically main the whole cast. So, everyone in this cast list that I'm going to learn to use at some point with varying degrees of enthusiasm, skill, and, well, <laughs> good fortune, I guess, factors into it somewhat. But, um, yeah, I think I'll uh, probably be doing a few weeks of certain characters and just play a week of rank with someone, and then go from there. You're definitely going to see Rig first. He's definitely my go-to. He is, by far and wide, the most powerful, like, fighter in my hands. So, yeah. Once I've had a bit more of a chance to, like, learn more about what he can do this time around, I think I'm good. Though purposefully holding myself back from heaven to hell is, uh, <laughs> a bit of a stupid mistake. But... Then again, it does make things more of a challenge. That command throw is good. And I do like it. But then... There always tends to be a lot more combo potential without it. Like... Okay, that does 78 just... Yeah, okay, that does a fair bit more. How much does that do? Oh, 55. So I'm getting two more damage by going into that. That's pretty bad. Then again, damage scaling in this does seem to be pretty hard. one of the lighter characters. I mean, obviously, if you've seen the size of her, she's tiny. Watch out. Weight has a big impact in this game. Like, a ridiculously big impact. Thirty-nine. Wait, what? Hang on. 
So that does 41, that's just the ordinary like bending stance. Uh, hang on, let me stop flitting that about. Not bending stance, that is back facing, isn't it? So, yeah, just the back facing down kick. Back facing down kick gives me 41. Using turn leg cuts down kick gives me 39. Why does the like simple back fit? I guess back facing is just it's harder to get rig into a natural back facing position because he doesn't really have many tools for it. But I think the best one is probably this. And then all he can do is go that way. If you go that way, he turns around, and if you sidestep, he turns around and faces upon. Then again, I would as well if you think about it. Like. Wearing a hood, you're probably not going to see shit when you're facing that way. Even if you turn your head, you ain't going to see much of your opponent. You're pretty much going to be relying on your sound, so it's a bit pointless. Either way, can I actually... Hang on. See, that doesn't do that if you hit the first hit, does it? But then... I think when I do that, I'm getting that, aren't I? Because it's not... Unleashing it. Yeah, it's not unleashing the first kick, so... There you go. So you have to very deliberately time that. Just... One, two. It's a little bit slower than I would like. Hmm. Anyway, that'll be me done, even after that little bit of a ramble and uh, final quick little combo testing. I don't know. I don't really mind Riggs' voice actor that much with the combat sounds. It's the freaking actual voice lines and voice that's just... It's like sticking a knife in a wound and then just slowly moving it round in a circle whilst twisting it left and right. It's like, it is quite painful, but it's to the point where it's like, it's also irritating pain rather than just outright pain. Uh, seriously guys, I want to know, what the fuck happened with your voice acting talent? Were they all just busy? Just, I don't even want to know. I'm curious. I really do want to know what happened to the voice acting talent in DOA. Because Christie's voice actor, Ryu's voice actor, Riggs' voice actor, Mila's voice actor, all not here. Now I can't quite tell with Jan Lee. I can't quite tell. So I'm going to have to figure that out. But still. The only voice actor of note that's even in here now is Yuri Lowenthal, who plays Hayate. That's it. Weird. I don't know, it's going to bother me for quite some time until I can like, figure out a good reason for it, I guess. Which I'm probably never going to do, because I can't exactly just go ahead and ask Tecmo. Anyway, Arrivederci.